shebang. Welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Hmm. That was actually pretty similar to Neve's Knives intro. Well, let's hope you never see this video, and you know what? If you do, Jared, don't 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 sue me for copyright infringement or anything. I, I, I apologize. <laughs> Anyways, let's get right into this, guys. Today we're taking a look at this knife here, the Best Tech Ascot. If you guys know me, know the channel, I'm a big fan of Best Tech knives. Does this knife join the ranks of my beloved Best Techs? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Let's do this review and find out. So let's start off with our blade length measurements and size comparisons and all that good stuff. We have a blade length of, ooh, ooh, a little tiny bit over four inches. This is not a particularly small knife. In fact, you can see here, I'm struggling to keep it all in frame for size comparisons, but there we go. So yeah, definitely a big boy knife. Let's jump right into our size comparisons with the Ontario Rat 1. And the rat too. That's a little bit. This knife doesn't like to sit up very good. <laughs> Maybe I'll get like a piece of. Yeah, I've got a little piece of plastic. Let's see if this will be enough to keep him up. Nope. Anyways, so so him flopping over is kind of throwing this off a little bit, but definitely, definitely longer than the rat one. I don't know actually. You know, the rat one's kind of a hard knife. To judge size on because the rat one's a bigger knife than a lot of people realize in fact sometimes even i forget how big the rat one is and do i have rust on there i do i actually took this guy out on a camp on a hiking trip with me just a little bit ago using to cut some food guess i didn't clean him good enough i'm so sure that rust yeah so you got a little tiny bit of rust right in there and a little bit up by the thumb studs too, I think, or is that just gunk? Ah, can't tell. Anyways, not important. This video is not about you, rat one. Get out of here. Slowing things down. Okay, next up, let's bring out our Civivis. There's the Praxis. And here's the Elementum. So yeah, very long knife, but nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere near as tall as a Praxis. I don't know what's getting into me today, today guys. I'm I'm not high, I promise. Um, next up, let's go with our bug out. And where did the PM2 go? There he is. And our PM2. So again, sit up, Ascot. Longer than the PM2, but... It, they look more similar in size because the PM2 is just taller. And to close off our comparisons, let's compare it against some best techs. Here is the Swordfish, another best tech with a four inch blade. And these two are very comparable in size. Very comparable in size. And then let's also grab the um, Paladin, where I put him. Oh, he's in my pocket. I carried him today. <laughs> There we go. And there's the Paladin. Cool, cool, cool. All right, size comparisons took a long time today, guys. Pardon my rambling. All right, so what are we looking at here in terms of materials? Get out here, little plasticky bit. We don't need you, you don't even help to begin with. So we have a D2 blade here with a satin finish. And it's a, it is a drop point. It's almost a, a straight back, but it does drop a little bit. So it is a drop point. We have handles here that are carbon fiber and G10, which I think is really, really cool. We have a G10 backspacer, steel liner lock, steel pocket clip, and then I'm pretty sure that this pivot collar is aluminum. Um, I know it's not steel. I don't think it's titanium, but yeah. So as I said, liner lock knife. One more thing I wanted to, I want to say real quick while we're talking about sizes. This boy's a chonker. Yeah. Yeah, see how thick that is? Pretty thick knife. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that. But first, let's go to the cutting footage, shall we? All right, let's do some more cutting and stuff. Best Tech Ascot. A hard use tactical knife pretending to be a gents carry? Maybe so. How are those ergos? 
Um, they're comfortable. The knife is pretty fat and it's nicely contoured so you get that comfortable feeling. The clip basically disappears in your hand. The jimping up here is not very functional, but it's a comfortable knife. Wouldn't say it's ergonomic, comfortable, very comfortable. How's the action? It's a good action. Rockets out of there. I like that action quite a bit. Uh, how's it carry? Well, let's get into that. So again, it's a fat knife. The clip isn't anything exciting. I wish they put a different clip on here actually. But there's what it looks like in the pocket. Well, I guess the flipper tab you can feel a little bit goes in. You know, Best Tech might not make the prettiest clips, but by gosh, they make some of the most functional clips out of anyone. I think, because this clip does exactly what it's supposed to do. Really, really nice. Okay, again, it's a big knife, so if that's not your thing, this probably won't be your knife. <laughs> All right, drop point blade, D2, kind of a plain looking blade, but, oops, this slice is so nice. This thing's like 15 thousandths behind the edge. Pretty thick blade, but they, Best Tech knows how to do their flat grinds. Yeah. I have no complaints there. None. Okay. See here? Let's grab my little rope. Oh no, my cutting thing went away. Okay, pretty good little pull through. Let's get down here. Now we're just seeing how far the blade goes on a single push through this pretty cheap and tough rope. And we are getting through all but one strand. Oh, there we went through all of them. So yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Not too bad. Get our pool noodle out here, handy dandy pool noodle. Let's see how thin we can get this. Yeah, for such a big, thick blade, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Let's get back to the table. Alrighty. Let's get into it with the Best Tech Ascot. So, what am I liking? What am I not liking? First thing first, there's a lot of different versions of this knife, and they all look really good. They all look very fancy. Now this is a very simple knife design. Uh, in a lot of ways it's nothing exciting, just a drop point blade and a handle. But I like this handle materials they're using and this pivot collar is just gorgeous. love that they have it on both sides. Ugh. So I think all the different versions of this knife, which having multiple versions is of course a plus, but all the different versions of this knife are so good looking as far as materials go. And so let's go on to the next thing I like, and that is the materials. This uh, G10 carbon fiber is really, really nice. I like that a whole lot. Very, very fancy, but also very functional. I mean, it's not like grippy, like on a Spyderco, uh, Spyderco's G10, but it has some texture. So, I don't know, it just looks nice. And as always, something I always appreciate from Best Tech is that they, they take the time to do extra milling on their handles. On this one, it's not as much as like on the Paladin here, but you know, there is something to be said for making your handles feel special and not just like slabs of, you know, like a, a slab of G10 or something. This is really nice. It's very nice and they're contoured. These scales are contoured, which is really, really cool. So uh, let's move on to the next thing I like. I'm sorry, I'm struggling to put the paladin back in my pocket while I'm sitting down. Oh boy, one of those reviews today. <laughs> so yeah, next thing, the ergonomics on this knife. 
very good. This knife is very hand filling. Uh, as you can see, there is plenty of real estate on this handle. <laughs> this is a big boy knife. Plenty of real estate on this handle. It's a very comfortable knife. The, the way it's contoured just fills a hand really nicely. The jimping up here is absolutely not functional jimping. Like, it's very smooth, but it's comfortable. Like, it, it, it tells your thumb where to rest, and it's comfortable, and it feels good, but it's not like, you know, locking you in jimping. But yeah, the knife overall just feels very comfortable in hand. No real hot spots. The clip just disappears. Really, really cool. Next thing, this action is amazing. So you have a pretty small flipper tab there, but it's situated in a good spot, it has good jimping, and this knife just fires. Nice close, very smooth. Really, really great detent. Let's listen to this. Ah, very positive snap. You can see the blade gets sucked in right about. Yeah, that's what I like to see, like that magnetic come here blade. Really, really nice. Fit and finish was good out of the box. Perfectly centered, no blade play, lock rock, anything like that. It's really good. This knife carries fairly well. I mean, it's pretty thick. It's not super heavy for the size of the knife that it is. I mean, it's not a lightweight, but it's not too terribly heavy. Again, I really don't care that much about weight, so I'm not really the right guy to ask for that, but you know. I really like the way the knife looks when it's folded up. It's very, very sleek. And you know what, we'll save that for last. Next thing I like are the small details. This pivot collar. I love pivot collars. Very, very nice. It's fitted in there pretty well. Got a, kind of a big gap right here. Fitted in there pretty well. Very shiny. Looks really, really good. Um, I love that the blade folds up into the handle. I love the flipper tab. I love that it has a... I mean, this is technically an external stop pin since it's part of the blade. But there we go. Very solid lockup. Really solid knife overall, actually. The blade is D2, and it performs perfectly well. I don't have a problem with D2. Uh, we'll talk about D2 here in a little bit, but I like D2. I know a lot of people are sick of it. It's a good performing steel, though. I mean, I don't really see why you would complain about it. Um, unless you live in an area where you're likely to get rust on your knife, then you might want to take care of this, especially since it's this satiny grind, satiny finish. You have a really nice sharpening choil. Pretty much perfect. Branding on the blade is minimal. It says D2 here, very, very tiny. Right there by the detent hole. And it has Best Tech knives over there. That's pretty cool. Flat grind gets nice and thin behind the edge. Best Tech is actually really good about thin edges. Not like Civivi thin, but pretty thin. In fact, if I, if I remember right, this knife is, I mean, it's definitely under, I think it's under 20. It's definitely under 20 thousandths. I think it's even under 18 thousandths. I take that measurement again right now, but I don't want to. I think I mentioned how thick it is behind the edge during the cutting footage. I'm pretty sure I do. Um, another really nice little detail, actually I forgot to mention, is that they give you this little chamfer back here for your finger to land in when you're flipping it. Always like to see that. It's just a nice little attention to detail. Um, the blade you can see is pretty thick, actually. It's a pretty robust blade. Let's bring out my, my rat. This is what I always compare blade stock thickness to. So yeah, thicker than the rat, but it does slice good. Nice, thick, robust blade, but you still have good slicing geometry, which I think is really nice. Lock up, again, solid. You have milling in here quite a bit, actually, on that scale over there. So that helps bring down the weight a little bit. Really nice action. I like the way they did the lanyard hole here and the backspacer. And they have it kind of milled out in there. Really, really nice. Yeah. The last thing I like about this knife and the thing that I probably like the most is that even though it has kind of a plain design, it feels very unique. It feels like a tactical knife pretending to be a gentleman's carry. It's like it's big. You know, over four inch blade. It's robust, has this big thick handle, big nice thick blade, but it looks so elegant. And it has kind of that gentleman 
gentleman -y, you know, like, blade almost completely disappearing into the handle. It has the nice, fancy pops of color and the interesting handle material. I don't know, it's like, it's elegant, but also kind of a beast. And I think that's fantastic. I think that is fantastic. Um, yeah, oh, another thing to mention, access to the lock bar is really good. As you can see there, they have a scoop here and then you have a chamfer, they're on the lock bar. It's good, easy to get it, get to. But yeah, this knife just feels so interesting and I like that, I like that a whole bunch. Really cool. Ah, that action's fantastic. Mm, okay, all right, let's go ahead and get into what I don't like so much. One thing I don't like is that he doesn't stand up good. Stand straight, sir. All right, let's get into it with my dislikes on the Best Tech Ascot. So first of all, I kind of wish, I mean, they do offer different blade finishes. They have, uh, I think a stone wash, partly coated version, but I kind of wish they'd offer like a stone wash or coated version with this blue because mm, love the blue, love the blue. It's really, really nice. Next thing, the clip is kind of a letdown on this knife. I've said before that I think Best Tech makes kind of boring clips. And the thing with Best Tech clips is they function very well, even though they don't look very good. So I'm going to bring out the Paladin again. Very plain looking clip, but it functions really well. And I didn't complain about the clip on this knife very much at all, because I don't really mind that it looks plain, because it's just functional. And Paladin is a knife that, you know, I just want to be a good functional EDC. However, on this knife that's supposed to be a little more fancy, I really wish they'd given us something better than this. It works good in and out of the pocket. Gives you something to grab onto. Again, kind of giving you a little bit of those gentleman slash tactical type feelings. You know, give me plenty of room to pull it out of your pocket. But I kind of wish they'd gone with a titanium clip instead of this really satin, kind of almost cheap looking clip on this knife. I mean, the clip looks cheap compared to the rest of the knife. And I'm just not a big fan of that. I think a titanium clip would have been better, especially for the price that they're asking, which, you know, we'll get into here in just a little bit. I'll tell you what. I mean, also, usually I complain about pot clips not being reversible. I can kind of see it here because you don't want to mess up, mess up the show side on your otherwise fancy looking knife. I don't know, whatever, whatever. You do with that information what you will. Next thing, this screw here kind of just out of place to me. I don't know, like, I don't know. I kind of wish they put the clip, if they had to have a screw in this area, I wish they put it up here, but the screw just right there, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of that. Because you see here, you can see the grain of this carbon fiber G10 really nicely and then bleh, gets interrupted right there. Meanwhile, these clips are put out here kind of out of the way, or clips, ah, screws. Have I been calling them clips? Oh my gosh, someone needs a nap, and that someone is me. I have never taken a nap. Just ask my mom, I was a terrible child. Anyways, I'm <laughs> getting way off point. Screws, they're really tiny T6s. Yeah, whatever. T6s are kind of everywhere, you know? And the next thing is that this knife just isn't going to be for a lot of people. This is going to be just too big, legally speaking, and just comfortably carrying wise. It's just a big knife. And that's for some people and it's not for other people. So with that said, let's talk about the price. These come in at $88. I think that's a little high. It's just a little high. And here, here's the thing. Would I buy this knife again? Yes, I would actually. Because it's one of those things that's really weird. I think the price is worth it to me. Like I, I love this knife. Spoiler alert, I love this knife. But I do think it's a little bit too expensive. Just, just a hair. If this was coming in at like, heck, even $75, I think this would be absolutely amazing absolutely amazing.
And I understand that this carbon fiber G10 material is a little bit more premium, a little more fancy, a little more expensive, but you know, th th there's that. The other thing too is they're not intending for this to be a budget knife, I don't think. Most of Best Tech's budget knives, such as the Paladin, they just come in a little cardboard box and that's it. That's all you get. This knife, however, it comes with the uh, <clears throat> the Best Tech pouch that they send with their high-end knives, as well as a little cleaning cloth, which, by the way, these Best Tech pouches are super nice. I love them. They have two pockets and just really nice. I like the Best Tech pouches. Anyways, I don't think they're intending for this to be a budget knife. It, it's kind of a, a mid-grade knife, which is what the price is. How do I... Here's what I'm thinking. I wish they had 154cm on this blade. Again, I, I, I'm a D2 fan, and D2 is a great steel. It really is, and I don't really have a problem with it here. D2 used to be a super steel, but I feel like for the... For the sake of appearances, I guess, for lack of a better word, if they move this to 154cm, even if it bumped the price on this up to, I don't know, 100 bucks, at that point, I feel like the Ascot would be a very popular model. But, yeah, the price is kind of a meh area for me right now. So, let's get into my final conclusions. And my final conclusions is that this is a really awesome knife. Yes, the design is kind of boring. I guess I could put that in the negatives. Like, if you just saw the silhouette, nothing exciting. But I feel like there's a lot of things, other things about this knife that make it a little more exciting. And when you see a picture of the Best Tech Knives Ascot, I, I must say the first time I saw a picture of it, I was expecting a knife similar in size to a bug out or an Elementum. Excuse me. And then I read the specs. I was like, oh, that's a, that's a big knife. So I bought it opened it, and I was like, huh, it's even a little bit bigger than I thought it was. It, it has a very distinct presence, you know, not just because it's a very long knife, but I don't know, it just has a presence. And I feel like it's kind of, again, tactical gents carry. It is how, it, it, that's the genre I would assign this, this blade to. Tactical gents carry. You know, if you've got to go to the Royal Ball at 9 and then go fight ninjas at 10, this this is probably what you're carrying. Um, heck, maybe this might even, be the, uh, might, might even be a James Bond knife. Although, something tells me James Bond would probably carry a Sabinza or, or something. Maybe not even then, because that's an American knife. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but point is, is I do like this knife. What would I change about it? Honestly, I would change the jimping up here. I, I, I did not include the jimping when I was talking about the bad because I don't think they were meaning for this to be like good tractional jimping. It's just supposed to be kind of comfortable. But like the jimping on the Paladin here, this is perfect jimping. Absolutely perfect jimping. There's nothing wrong with the jimping on the Paladin. You should check out my video, my review of the Paladin, uh, if, you, if you get a chance, because it kind of sums up a lot of what I like about Best Tech, and I think the Paladin is just a fantastic knife. This is really just a great knife. But, you know, I, I do wish the jumping up here was a little bit better, and that's just my preference, you know. However, this is a great knife, and it functions perfectly fine as well, despite being, you know, that's a thick blade. It slices very, very nicely. It really does. And, I mean, another thing, too, is this would be a great gents carry for someone with huge monster hands. I mean, I don't have big hands at all, but, I mean, man, I've got, I've got all the room in the world left over. I mean, this is a four, five and a half finger grip. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's just... I like this knife a whole lot. I really do. And if you like it, I'm sure you can find a variation that fits you. They have the blacked out. They have like a, you know, carbon fiber with black G10, carbon fiber with green G10, red G10, I think. They have some wood. They have like a, some that have a, like a carbon fiber bolster and wood handle. It looks so good. But 
it's a good knife. It really is. And I understand it's not going to be for everyone because it is big. But if you don't mind carrying a bigger knife, I think you'll really enjoy this. Um, I actually carried this to Austin's wedding. If you remember when Austin got married. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys remember that. But Austin, you, if you remember Austin, he's been on the channel a few times. He got married a while ago. And I, I was his best man. And I carried this to his wedding. Um, because it's a good looking knife. It's a good looking knife. And yeah. Anyways, I think I'm just starting to ramble. Um, yeah, there's the Best Tech Ascot. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, leave it a like, comment below, and subscribe. And will you please stand up? Hey, you know what? We can just do this. <laughs> there we go. I've been Gideon. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.